Now let's go to the La General Hospital, where we've heard from the majority leader who explains why there's been a delay um, you know, in the construction of the project that was pulled down in 2019 after some report was done on it, assessment reports was done on it. Now, we're told that the sponsors of this project have said that they will not release the monies because we have gone to IMF. And so we have an IMF deal now. And so that is why they are not releasing the money. But let's see what the MP for Ladari Kutupong, uh, Annabelle Rita Odolisowa, had to say. In fact, she's making a passionate appeal to the First Lady. Take a look international that they want to support us in the construction of the hospital because healthcare is not about politics. Once again, we are calling on His Excellency Nanado Dankwe Kufadu and we are calling on his beautiful Rebecca. You are a woman, you are a mother for Christ's sake. Can you talk to your husband in the bedroom to come to our aid? You've been to uh, Konfanochi Hospital. I learned you put up something there. What about La General Hospital? You are a Gadangwe woman like me. So I'm calling on her. Madam Rebecca, beautiful Rebecca, wife of His Excellence Nanado Dankwe Kufado, I've gotten to your doorstep now. If I have to come to your office and plead with you, that speak on behalf of the people of Dadekotopong. Eric, are we concerned about the people in Dadekotopong? Because how then do we pull down a structure when we have not secured the funds to put it up? We're given timelines, some two years. That didn't happen. And now we're getting this excuse that sponsors have refused to release the monies because we're with the IMF. How does that wash? So, well, I mean, I have uh, very little, um, if you like, information on this one. But my initial, uh, I mean, conversation about this was the fact that the uh, assessment was done. Mm -hmm. And it was very clear that the building or the buildings there were basically not fit for purpose and that it had to come down. Mm -hmm. And so some uh, arrangements were made for a new hospital to be built on the same site. And then we've had some bottlenecks when it comes to the funding sources. I, I don't think that is in anybody's interest that uh, you would uh, intentionally, I mean, disadvantage mm -hmm. a group of people, especially when it comes to issues to do with, with healthcare. Uh, my only challenge is that because it's taken a while, uh, it's almost as if that it's been neglected and but with some of these things what you do is that you need constant engagement with the people to give them an idea of where you are when it comes to the, the, the funding and all that but you see for anybody to say that why do you pull down the facility mm. and if you don't have the the fund the source of funding i think that it, i mean it's actually moving away from the facts is it really i think that because they they were very certain and when it comes to some of these things they always exigencies of the time, the incontingencies that would uh -huh. happen. And I'm, I'm sure that whoever did that was doing that in, 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 the, in the best interest. But could they have started on one side, I putting th up a building, and then after that they'll transfer them to that building and then finally pull this oh, one yeah, down. But I mean, those if are, you don't have the money, then those why are, do you those are technical, pull down the entire Those are technical space. stuff that you would uh, consider. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to sit here and say that if a certain group of people by dint of where they find us, or them, uh, geographically, if they don't have access to a general hospital, it's a good thing, and that I mean, government should not do anything about it. Mm. You understand? But the facts of the matter is that government does a whole bunch of stuff, and in certain instances, you might make certain decisions and maybe get it wrong, or even in the best interest of whatever you're trying to do, might not go according to plan. Mm -hmm. The minister, um, the um, the majority leader indicated a couple of days ago that it looks like now we found an alternative source of funding and that in, in earnest this uh, edifice mm -hmm. will be put up, right? So it's rather unfortunate that we've got into this particular uh, point where uh, the edifice has been pulled down and then it hasn't even been rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Because even that argument of that is that even as it was being done, it would have taken a certain period for that to... Uh, to be complete, right? And so my question is that even the local, if you like, the, either the district health directorate or the municipal health directorate, yeah. will now have an engagement with the people and give them an idea of which areas that they can have access to healthcare in the meantime until this one. Yeah, but the is, facilities is within that 
community are overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. There's LECMA, mm -hmm. and then there's also the La Polyclinic, which mm -hmm. is overwhelmed. In fact, they don't work beyond 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then there's Kolibu. Now, there's also the concern about Kolibu and the structural integrity of most of their buildings mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's as if we were trying to solve one problem, but now we've even made it worse for everyone in that community. No, no, I, I understand. I mean, and I, I would uh, sit with the, with the people. I would side with the people all the time. As a citizen, they have every right to demand. They have every right to agitate mm. and ask government to do the right thing. It's also our responsibility to come out and then explain the realities and say that, okay, these are the things, these are the indications, these are what was open to us in terms of information. However, because of ABC, the initial sponsor of the project decided to pull out. Right, and mm -hmm. these processes, these um, negotiations, three years. no, these negotiations will take a while. After three no, years, we only went to the IMF this year. I know, but I'm saying that these negotiations and these things, agreements, putting them together, takes a long time. For example, there are hospitals that the NDC tasks itself for building is uh, under the Eurojet project, and those funds were secured under Kofor. Do you understand so, what I'm so your point, so, your point exactly. The point I'm making because is that I don't see these are how complex, anybody these are, who is in Ladadek could uh, fall why, at this point would really why, be concerned about this. I, they I, want their hospital. That's why I say that I empathize with them. Mm -hmm. And I feel that even in the midst of all of these things, there has to be proper community engagement. Has there been? Because I don't live there. I, I, I mean, I, 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 I'd want to know that. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? There has to be proper community engagement. There has to be some kind of stakeholder engagement with the, the, the leaders and opinion leaders and all, all of those things. And find some uh, short-term measures to deal with the challenges whilst uh, a permanent solution is mm -hmm. put in place. Is it related to the Lanford Hotel? I would not know that. You wouldn't know? I okay. Know that. Lawyer, what do you make of this matter? It's been three years and now we're being given this excuse that IMF is the reason why this hospital will be delayed. Bella, the sponsors, are they a secret cult? Hmm. Is it a secret, no. uh, what do you call no. it? So why couldn't the speak at the majority leader mention the name in parliament? Was, is there something there that, you know, he can't mention the name and just say sponsors? So how can we believe what he's saying? Well, we're who, hoping that is the same sponsors who, from the beginning. I mean, you the said there was a credit facility and from and Standard Chartered yes, Bank, yes, Standard the Chartered United Bank. Kingdom, yes. So let's go ask Standard Chartered Bank. Well, let me just read the whole thing. So it says that um, it was to be financed by a credit facility from Standard Chartered Bank of the United Kingdom with an export credit guarantee from China's Sinoja worth 68 million euros with an insurance cover of 3.8 million euros. When was this done? This was when it was pulled down. We're told that it was going to come up. And so this is as far back as 2022, actually. This is when this, these details, no, in fact, 2020. So, journalists, go question them. Mm. It's your responsibility now. Go question them. That is what the uh, uh, majority leader has said. Go question them. Find out from Standard Chartered Bank. Find out from the Chinese. Is it so? Is it because of where we are? We went to IMF. That's why you've pulled it out. That plus trade fair is being demolished. Do we know when trade fair is going to come back up? Because you see, the challenge I have is the transparency issue. Transparency in terms of communication. At any given stage, do you not tell the people? Because of X, because of Y, we haven't been able to progress. And these are the steps we are taking to help progress it. It's been silent since 2020. Nobody has said anything. And we are all watching, you know. Watching, watching, nobody says anything. When you question, then you're thrown somewhere else. Oh, it has to go through X, Y, Z. When the answer is there. If it is true that Standard Chartered and the others are saying, we are not interested in this particular project anymore. What agreement did you have with them for them to come and sponsor? And in that agreement, was there a clause in there saying that if anything happens with the economy, we are withdrawing the sponsorship? Is it in the contract? I expected Oseche Mr. Bunzu to bring that contract to Parliament and go through to the fine tooth comb, even if it's not Parliament, the Committee on Health, go through the fine tooth comb mm. and see whether Standard Chartered and the others have done the right thing and take them on. Because it's the people. Look at the lady standing there talking about it. Hmm. And she's now appealing to who? The president's wife? Yes. She'd be appealing to the president. The president's wife is not a public figure. 
The president's wife is the president's wife because she's the president's wife. But it sits within her constituency, I believe. Either lad that it could to is she a, from Osu, is we're she told. A, is she a public figure? Do we not have a regional minister for Accra? But she's the wife of the president. Uh, so, is she a public figure? Can we question her? Okay, let me go to Broja. Koko, give me five minutes so Broja can also touch on this. Because I know that the minority had been agitating for, for this and mounting pressure on the health minister. Well, because I've given all of you five minutes to speak on this, so I have to. Because my director was counting me down, so I just needed to buy some time. This, this whole issue, it's, it's very interesting. And when you're listening to the excuses that are coming, government goes to a district hospital, pulls the entire building to ground zero. I mean, that's not goes to cut a sword mm -hmm. for constructing a new hospital. Three years after that, government says that, look, we're not able to secure funding because we're incompetent, we couldn't manage the economy, and we took the economy to IMF, mm -hmm. and so sponsors are not willing to sponsor it. I mean, how, how does a responsible government behave in this manner? No responsible government will behave in this manner. What they did in 2020 by pulling down the entire building mm. was a campaign deceitful strategy. How so? Because they had promised their people that they were going to build a new district mm -hmm. uh, uh, hospital for them. Mm -hmm. And you see, one element that helps deceit to succeed is believability. So in order for the people to believe that the district hospital will come, mm -hmm. they needed to pull down the existing one so that the people will now believe. Because it will not make sense that if you are not ready to construct the hospital, why do you break down the existing one? So it was merely a campaign gimmick to deceive the people and hoodwink them into voting for them. Now, when the no, people... But, but if that's the case, when, no, no, no. When MPP the is looking people, to break the eight. Say again. So this should matter to them. MPP is looking to break the eight. This should matter to them. No hospital they has will come up. They will come up with new um, deceitful how, strategies. How is that possible? Yes, yes. That, I mean, that's why they've elected Dr. Mahmoud special, down special But let me deal with... Duties. Let me deal with... So let me deal with the first lady issue. It's important. You see, the woman, that's the MP for the area, she's appealing to the first lady, not because the first lady is a public figure. The first lady has a foundation running. Mm -hmm. She gets monies from government institutions. Government institutions donate taxpayers' money. Really? To, yes, GMPC wow. gives money to Rebecca Foundation. That's why he's able, she's able to go around and do some kind of things. And so if this MP says that you are a guy at Dangbe, you are from our region, your husband has come to pull down our district hospital, she, he came to cut sword a big ground, and we never saw him again. And so come to our aid. I think that it, it is not out of place. Okay. Okay. Well, our time is up. We have to it's go. But good morning to everyone who's watching. Musa well. Abato, I see your message. Uh, Saidu Abdu and everybody on Facebook. I wish I could have read all your messages. But let's go into some details. In fact, give me a minute. So this one says, and that is from... Don Don, he says that this government, okay, let me move from that. Bella was, we saved a building here in Sheffield in a similar situation as the La Hospital. They complained about um, spoiling concrete, which could easily be resolved using cathodic protection. These people knew nothing about governance. I feel sorry. Well, but, I, I, Bella, I, let, let me just. Today is a birthday of a special person. Okay. Let me just wish him. Uh, Please Mr. do that quickly. I have Mr. Asante, five seconds. today is his birthday. Okay. Uh, I wish him a long life in good health. Happy birthday to you. And thank you so much for joining me this morning. Eric Amwakuchum is a member of the MPP communications team. Roger Jemfi is um, he is the deputy director, actually, for special duties for the NDC. And Kwame Janto is a chairman um, for <laughs> Political <laughs> Affairs Committee, CPP. Uh, he's a lawyer. But in collaboration <laughs> with the Ministry of Works and Housing, <laughs> Rent It is giving uh, an opportunity for the youth across the country to work with them for a month as data validators. So people who will be employed can receive up to 1,500 Ghana cities. Anyone who has the ability to navigate through a mobile phone can apply. All you have to do is to log on to rentit.homes forward slash MOH. Rentit.homes forward slash MOH. Or you can WhatsApp or call these numbers 0530-491-679 or 0530-422-521. So make sure you do uh, call them and get this job. But also we're playing cash out today, star 439 hash. Select option two, but you must be an MTN subscriber. 
and you can win 1,000 Ghana CDs on the show this morning. Four people are going to win 1,000 Ghana CDs each. Later, we'll zoom into the National Theatre conversation and take a look at what really the problem is. Keep watching.